Hi there. This video looks at the issue of objective similarity within the context of copyright infringement. Objective similarity is one of two elements to be proved to establish that a literary, dramatic, musical or artistic work has been reproduced in a material form, which is of course an infringement of the copyright in that work under the Copyright Act. So what exactly is it? Broadly speaking, it asks whether there is a sufficient degree of objective similarity between the two works, or in other words, how closely does the later work resemble the original. Now, while this might sound straightforward, it's complicated by the need to distinguish between the copying of an idea, concept or theme, as opposed to the copying of the particular form of expression of that central idea. Copyright can only subsist in the latter. The Copyright Act does not protect ideas or concepts. So at this point, it's useful to consider two Australian cases that came to different conclusions on the question of objective similarity. The first is Zicola and Universal City Studios, which was a claim by Universal that Zicola had infringed its copyright in Steven Spielberg's 1975 film Jaws and its associated novel and screenplay. The court considered the major issue in this case to be whether Zicola's film, Great White, had substantially reproduced either the novel Jaws or the screenplay. Crucial to resolving this issue was the degree of objective similarity between the two literary works and the film, Great White. Justice Gray viewed both films back to back and found such a high degree of similarity between them that there was an unavoidable inference of copying. The combination of situations, events and scenes in Great White, which constituted the particular expression of the concept of a giant shark terrorising a seaside community, was simply too close to that in Jaws. We'll come back to Zicola after looking at our second case, Telstra Corporation and Royal and Sun Alliance Insurance. Here, Royal was alleged to have infringed copyright owned by Telstra in the script and dramatic work associated with the original and very popular Yellow Pages go -Go Mobile advertisement. Royal's alleged reproduction was the similarly memorable Shannon's car insurance go, -Go Mobile ad a decade or so later. Telstra's copyright claims here were merely assumed to be valid, and Justice Merkel considered that the script and film of the Shannon's ad bore little resemblance to the script of the Yellow Pages ad. The only significant resemblance related to the Gogo Mobile, however this constituted copying of a concept rather than the expression of that concept. Similarly, His Honor held that the similarities between the series of dramatic events recorded in each ad related to ideas or concepts. These similarities included the Gogo Mobile theme and the main character's Scottish accent and its use in the advertisement. However, they were insufficient to demonstrate substantial reproduction of the expression of the dramatic events in the Yellow Pages ad. So with these two decisions in mind, what can we take away? Well, there were some factual differences to explain the different results. In Zicola, there was a substantial degree of objective similarity between the characters, scenes and events in each film. In Telstra, by contrast, while the Shannons had clearly borrowed key concepts from the Yellow Pages commercial, it placed its own stamp on them and created an original work. Think of it like 90s classics Deep Impact and Armageddon. Same concept, different expression. Another factual difference which may have played a small part was that in Zicola, the matter being considered was an interlocutory injunction application. This meant that Universal only needed to establish a prima facie case of infringement, whereas in Telstra, Justice Merkel was making definitive findings as to the party's rights. So in closing, the key takeaway on objective similarity is to remember what is and is not capable of copyright. Determining first what constitutes the idea or concept will help to then figure out whether the expression of that theme is sufficiently similar so as to constitute reproduction, or instead, whether it can be considered original work.